Hey, Dave, how's it going today? Pretty good, man. That voiceover guy makes me sound like a big deal. <laughs> I like that. That's official, man. Yeah, that's good stuff, right? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> What's happening, man? You guys ready for the playoffs? Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is one of my favorite times of the year, right up there with the uh, you know last couple of weeks of wrestling season. The, uh, love, love me some ACB. I love the uh, love the playoffs. Good time. Now, uh, how many times have you guys faced Northfield this this year? That's your uh, first round playoff opponent. Uh, we played with now. We have got a uh, with the team going up to ten teams. With the league going up to ten teams this season. Rather, we ended up playing a twenty seven game schedule. Everybody's just playing everybody three times. So uh, we beat these guys all three times. We faced them, but we're definitely not taking them lightly because two of the three games were I think one run games. The other one only beat them by a few. So they, you know, they've been playing this stuff all year. They're a scrappy team. A lot of younger guys. But they've got a couple, you know, talented veterans mixed in. Ross Costello, some guys like that. Uh, really nice players, uh, but they're scrappy one through nine, and even you know, even a little deeper than that. So we're definitely not taking these guys lightly. John, what are the uh, what's it going to take for for one of these teams, maybe uh, Absecon or a team like Egg Harbor City, to uh, jump up and knock off either Hamilton or the Hurricanes from Margate? I mean, these two teams have been going at it in the championship series the last couple of years, and and they're the big dogs on the block. What's it going to take for a team like you guys or, or one of these other teams to to kind of jump up and bite them a little bit? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a good question. The, uh, we've definitely closed the gap. I mean, we're right there with them. We were, you know, we were all back and forth all season long. We beat both teams this year. Uh, both teams took two or three from us, but, uh, Hamilton, we, uh, we played them close. They beat us by a run twice, needed 12 innings the one time. So we're right there with those guys. Um, Margate, we beat them early in the season. They, you know, beat us up pretty good the second couple of times we played them. But, uh, you know, those two teams have built really well for this time of year. Uh, we go to a best of three playoffs, uh, first two rounds, and then best of five in the finals. So they're built really well in terms of, uh, you know, pitching is so important and, and veteran pitching is so important. Um, and both of those teams have three or four really good starters. So, but we, you know, we're right there with them. We, when we finished a game back of both of those teams. Uh, you know, we set a new uh, club record with 21 games, you know, 21 wins in the regular season. We like to think our pitching is right there with them. Uh, unfortunately, I got one or two guys that are, uh, you know, kind of shut down for the season in terms of uh, college coaches uh, wanting to take it easy on innings limits and things like that. But, but even with that being said, we, we've got some talented pitching, and you know, our offense is, you know, maybe the best in the league, one of the best in the league, if not. Um, so, you know, we like to think we've closed the gap and we can give those guys a run. But yeah, I'd be lying if, you know, if I said those aren't the two teams to beat for sure. But uh, you know, as long as we handle business in the first round here, it looks like we'll probably get a crack at uh, Margate in the semifinals, and you know, we'll love the opportunity. How good is Hamilton this year? Last year, they they rode guys like uh, Brad Mountain and and Kevin Baxter and Billy Jackson. You know, some guys that have been with them for uh, quite a while to the championship. Um, how good are they this year compared to the last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think last year they were really, really, really good. Uh, this year they're they're definitely good, um, but. Uh, losing Billy Jackson. Billy Jackson signed an independent professional baseball contract, so oh, okay. losing him definitely hurts. Um, but yeah, they've still got Mountain and Baxter, who are you know on any given night. Uh, you know, the other night we played them, and and we got the Baxter a little bit in the first inning. Had a nice uh, three run first inning, and then he was pretty much lights out from there. Yeah, he's tough. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we really put another two or three guys on base after that. But we got to him earlier this season too. Uh, Mountain, we actually haven't seen this year, which is you know probably the first year we can say that, but. Um, you know, we've had some mixed results with them before. We've had some good games with them before, so but they're still tough. And you know, even beyond those first two, they, they've got a couple other guys that they can march out there uh, in terms of pitching. But losing Jackson definitely hurts them. I mean, Jackson love the kid. You know, love competing against the kid. He's a bulldog. Takes the ball. You know, he's the kind of kid that'll pitch on two, three days rest. You know, uh, and he's good offensively, defensively too. You know what I mean? Jackson's really tough, but he'll, yeah, they're, they're he'll just, pitch. He'll pitch on an hour's rest. <laughs> I was going to say, Jackson is the kind of kid that'll pitch both games with a double header. <laughs> right. just, that kid will just keep pitching and pitching and pitching, takes the ball, works quick, pounds his own. Everything he throws is, is hard and heavy. And, you know, he's a heck of a talented kid. But, you know, that takes nothing away from those guys because I'll, I, you know, I'd still take Brad Mountain and Kevin Baxter at the top of the rotation on any given day, too. Yeah, that, those, aren't, those aren't bad options. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and people forget, too, they lost Trevor Rosenberg, too, who uh, actually enlisted. So, I mean, that's another big arm that they've had dominating for them over the last five, uh, five to ten years. So, um, but still, they still probably have the best pitching rotation in the league. I mean, as good as Margaret is, you know, and they've got some stud pitchers too. Uh, Lou Pepper and Downey and uh, Lanko give them that in the top three. But, I mean, Hamilton's pitching staff might even be a little, you know, just a little bit of an edge there pitching-wise. John, I just got a text from uh, Dave Deani. 
dad of Mike Diani he said, "Go have Seekin." So we, you got some fans out there listening. <laughs> oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah, Mikey D is going to be uh, what a heck of a pitcher. He's the one that took down Margate earlier this year. Mikey Diani, a uh, heck of a pitcher from Holy Spirit, having a nice career up there at uh, Gwynn and Mercy after a couple years here. Um, yeah, I'd love to have Mikey D. Unfortunately, he shut it down for the summer in terms of his college coach, and he threw a lot of innings this year, going from his freshman to his sophomore year, then went down to Myrtle Beach and right. played a nice, uh, nice big league down there too. But you know, but that's the nature of this stuff, and we can definitely appreciate that. College, you know, college definitely comes first. I always joke around with my guys; they could throw out their arms after college and pro days and things like that. <laughs> yeah. That was the old Mike Isgro played for me for a lot of years. The old Cedar Creek coach, Atsugami High School standout, went up to Del Valle, did great things. Uh, you know, I used to joke around that we're going to start him every Monday and Friday as soon as he was done his playing career. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who's really getting it done for you guys? Who, who's been the uh, the catalyst uh, for the F Seekin squad? Well, I'll tell you, this is probably the, you know, maybe the best defense we've ever had defensively. We're, we're really strong. Two or three deep at catcher, middle infield, you know, one of the best in the league. Uh, and we're three, four, five deep there, too, with Joe Perez, Anthony Cacuza, C.J. Lafagola. Uh, you know, we've got a lot a lot of guys up the middle there. Uh, Ed Truitt, um, the Cedar Creek current Cedar Creek coach, another great middle infielder. Um, stellar, I mean, and then offensively, we've got a, a handful of guys. We've got, I think last I checked, we had five or six guys hitting over 400, three guys hitting over 500. Um, the big boppers in the middle, Dan Allen, Ed Robert Township grad, Steven Steck grad, um, and a new guy this year, Ray Keelan, who, you know, for my money, might be the best hitter in the league. Um, he's a uh, Southern Regional grad went to Caldwell. Um, he's, uh, I think, he's got six or seven home runs, uh, and, and you know he's batting over six hundred on base over seven hundred. Um, lefty just doesn't, you know. And the tough thing about him is he's got no weak spots. You know, I keep hearing kids say, "Pitch him outside, pitch him outside," and then he rips one down the uh, left field line. Like, he's just powered off the field, tech the hitter. And then I've got guys like Anthony Kikuza, you know, San Augustine Prep, I'm seeking, you know, I'm seeking resident. Uh, you know, setting the table along with uh, C.J. Lafagola, you know, right on down the line. You know, a couple of great catchers and uh, Stephen Hewa, Jimmy Versage, uh, you know, Matty Branco, another scrappy player that, that's doing really well for us. Matty Allen, you know, our ace pitcher coming into the playoffs here. Uh, you know, and I could go on and on and on. We've got we've got a really nice thing going defensively and offensively. You know, if we get some good pitching here, then we're going to be in good shape. Hey, if you if you need a fill in second baseman, man, you got my number. I like it. I like. It. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can hit ninety anymore, though. <laughs> that, I don't know if I can hit that kind of pitching anymore. Yeah, and you know it's funny because this time of year we see it too. You know, during the year, you know, you see a lot of great pitching, but you know, with three and four game weeks, especially once you get a rain out and get into those four and five game weeks, sometimes you know, every once in a while you'll catch a guy who's you know, uh, you know, I don't want to disrespect anybody, but you'll see an arm that's you know. Not not so so special kind of thing. This time of year, everybody's throwing their best. Everybody's up there, you know, at least mid eighties and things like that. Pounding the zone, good stuff. Experienced pitchers, so it's a fun time of year. I mean, you're definitely not going to get any freebies this time of year. Yeah, it's funny. I was out at the championship game last year, uh, Hamilton versus Margate Hurricanes, and uh, you know, watching watching Downey and and Baxter go at it, and I was thinking to myself. Uh, I'd I'd have trouble with these guys twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now, now forget yeah. about it. Yeah, it's funny. I haven't I haven't faced either one of those guys, but Downey Downey really throws hard. He, he does. Down and Bad Baxter might not throw as hard. I, I don't know. He might, but he just looks like everything he throws is heavy as heck. I mean, he just everything he throws is just man. He pounds that zone too. Those guys are those guys are both fun to watch. And the uh, the Cox kid from Millville, I think the year before, he he had to have been touching ninety two, ninety three that game. Yeah, Big Aaron, yeah, you know, he's obviously doing pretty well in the Angels organization now. Yeah, he was definitely plus the kid's about seven foot six, so <laughs> you know, he he jumps off the mound you know, I mean he's six four, six five, whatever it is. But he he was another one. He threw hard and heavy. Plus he, he mixed up three or four pitches too. He and had command of all of them. He was really tough. Oh, uh, he was nasty. He was. He might have been the best pitcher in the in the league that year. He was just he was filthy. We're talking with John O'Kane, coach of the Abseekin team in the ACBL. Uh John, how, how cool is it? Uh, for some of these high school kids to get a look at at what the next level's like, both in college and some of these guys who really had success in college and are now in their in their mid twenties and still playing well, uh, I I would assume you'd encourage any high school player to get out there and watch some of these playoff series. It's huge, you know. It's funny, like our last game of the uh, the year the other night, we were playing the Green Wave. Who, you know, God bless Dave Housel. Dave Housel's a great guy, classy dude. Uh, he's doing a great job with those guys. I know they took their lumps this year. I think they ended up squeezing into the playoffs, though, in their first year in the league. Um, he's got a scrappy, scrappy group of kids. But, 
you know, the last week of the season, he lost three of his top four pitchers. The uh, Ryan Kulik, who I don't know, you know, a lot of people might, around here might not know, but he was an absolute stud at uh, Rowan University, won his last 15 or 16 starts or something like that of his college career, and then got as high as AAA with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals after getting drafted. Um, he was lights out, but just, you know, he got the phone call the other day and signed a uh, pro contract with the Sussex Skyhawks up north. Uh, then he had another injury issue with his top guy, another one of his top guys. So, you know, they're heading into the playoffs with tough pitching, but, you know, they, they've got a lot of scrappy young players. And it's funny because we were, you know, we had a good game the other day, actually offensively, we kind of exploded and put up 18 runs, but, uh, funny story, Dave Housel put himself into pitch and Dave himself was, you know, played, you know, pro baseball for seven, eight, nine years, whatever it was, had a nice career, heck of a ball player, switch hitter, you know, power from both sides. And, uh, my little brother, who doesn't get to play all that much, you know, he's a, he's a freshman college, didn't play a whole lot in high school or anything like that, but he had the chance, Dave put himself into pitch, and my little brother, uh, Tommy O'Kane, had the chance to uh, get a little of bat off him, and, I, and he told me after the game, he was he was dying to get a hit, he ended up dribbling a little nothing in front of the mound, but <laughs> um, he was dying to get a hit just so he could say he got a hit off a guy that used to play pro ball, like, <laughs> that, that is kind of what it is, like, and Housel was telling me the same thing, at one point this year, 15 straight games, He's got mostly high school kids, a couple, couple college guys, but mostly high school kids. And he said at one point this year they had 15, 16 straight games where they faced nothing but college-level pitching. I mean, you, you can't go anywhere else to get that kind of competition, I mean. And then you mix in a guy like, you know, Lou Pepper, who was another big-time college guy a few years ago, you know, uh, uh, Jared Lanko, you know, big-time college guy. Jason Downey was shutting things down at Rutgers a few years ago. Brad Mountain pitched professionally for a couple years. I mean, you know, you mix that into some top Division One, Two, II, and Three arms. And, you know, it's it's a really great league. It really is a lot of great pitching, a lot of great stuff. But that is the fun dynamic too. You know, some of these guys get to face some of these former pros and you know guys that they've been reading about in high school and college and you know former standouts. And now they're kind of trying to make their name. And you know, and it's it is fun to watch. Good stuff, Oak. We're up against the break. Got to let you go. But uh, good luck this week in the playoffs with the Avsekin. And you guys are taking on Northfield starting Monday. So uh, good luck to your boys. Absolutely. Thank you kindly, Dave. We're going to have to get you on the roster one of these years for that. Uh, <laughs> Maybe the uh, the old-timers game. <laughs> <laughs> this is a summer classic. I like it. There you go. Thanks, Oak. Appreciate it, man. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Dave. Take care. Have a great one. All right. That was John O'Kane.